North Korea's worn-out artillery shells are keeping Russia in the fight. According to the American magazine Foreign Policy, the supply of old and often unreliable ammunition from the North Korea over the past year has become one of the biggest threats to Ukraine's ability to resist the advance of Russian troops. Citing experts, it is noted that as of this summer, at least 2 million shells had been sent to Russia, many of which were old, damaged or in some way faulty. As former U.S. State Department official and North Korean weapons proliferation expert Van Diepen noted, these are not high-quality munitions, but without them, the Russian way of warfare will be difficult to sustain. The Russian way of capturing territory is through heavy artillery bombardment, followed by advancement. Michael Kaufman, a senior fellow in the Russia and Eurasia program at the Carnegie Endowment, for international peace agreed that North Korean artillery shells are not very good, but he said when it comes to artillery ammunition, quantity has its own quality. The expert calculated that it was supplies from North Korea that allowed Russia in a critical year to maintain an artillery fire advantage over Ukrainian troops at a level of 3 to 1 and higher. That is why the huge number of even low-quality weapons from the North Korea on the battlefield is causing such concern among Ukrainian military leaders and U.S. officials, the magazine writes. Recall that in August, a report by the South Korean Defense Intelligence Agency noted that since mid-2022, North Korea has sent 13,000 sea containers to Russia that could have been used to transport weapons. It was reported that more than 6 million 152mm artillery shells could be shipped through the eastern port of Najin. In addition, there have been suggestions that the North Korea could also supply Russia with 122mm artillery shells, mobile anti-aircraft and anti-tank missiles. North Korea's provision of weapons has strengthened Russia's hand in Ukraine by allowing it to keep its arsenals stocked at home. Chief of Defense General Karsten Brewer of Germany said recently, It's about increasing the production of weapons for Russia's aggression in Ukraine. It's also strengthening Russia by making it possible for them to keep their stocks like they are, Brewer told. Ukraine and the United States, among other countries and independent analysts, say that North Korea is helping Russia in the war against Ukraine by supplying rockets and missiles in return for economic and other military assistance from Moscow. Moscow and Pyongyang have denied direct arms transfers which would violate United Nations embargoes. In order to completely push Ukrainian forces out of Kursk, the Russian Defense Ministry needs 15 to 20 brigades. We are talking about 50,000 servicemen, which the Kremlin simply does not have at the moment and has nowhere to get reserves. And the fighting in Kursk region has been going on since August 6, 2024. The Russian Defense Ministry stated that on October 3rd, Ukrainian forces attempted to break through the defense of the Russian armed forces in the Novi Put area. Russian war correspondents write that Putin's army managed to restore its positions in the Vesyoloi area and the battles for the settlement are still ongoing. In this area, the enemy deployed the 83rd Airborne Brigade. Fighting continues on the main Ukrainian salient in the Kursk region. However, it has not yet led to a change in the front line. Recently, Suspilnoi journalists published a report about conscripts who are fighting against the Ukrainian armed forces in Kursk region. According to Russian lawyers Regina Ivshina, law enforcement agencies received complaints from mothers of soldiers from 10 different military units of the Russian Federation. According to her, there may be up to a thousand conscripts in Kursk region. Journalists from the BBC wrote that the conscripts are in the 488th and 245th motorized regiments of the Moscow military district. Recall the incursion of several thousand Ukrainian troops into the Kursk region in early August was the first time Russian territory had been attacked and occupied by foreign forces since the German invasion of 1941, a major event by any reckoning. Its symbolic dimension received wide coverage in the Western media. For Russian President Vladimir Putin, it was a grave affront, especially as the operation relied on Washington approving the use of short-range U.S. missiles.
Reactions in Russia to events in Kursk evolved rapidly, much as they did in the autumn of 2022 during the Ukrainian counter-offensive in the Kharkiv region and Yevgeny Prigozhin's attempted coup in June 2023. First came shock, then anger, and ultimately acceptance of the new normal.